Well, as you can see, we are playing Sugar Cube Bittersweet Factory, the game with the happiest pants of all time. In any case, as we load in here, this is indeed Sugar Cube Bittersweet Factory. It's a platformer that just came out on Steam. I believe it was produced by a Korean studio. I think that's what it said during the, uh, like, you know, the ribbons that you get at the start of the game where it's like, a John Favreau film written by John. Anyway, this is not written by John Favreau. This is written by somebody completely different. And we're going to check this out. This is the cutest fucking platformer I've seen in a long time. Just look at that sugar cube on the right side there. It's also completely devoid of graphic and music options and sound options apart from making it full screen or not full screen. So if the game's in a weird resolution, I apologize. It is not my problem. On the bright side, it does naturally uh, notice or recognize the Xbox 360 controller, which is my preferred method for playing platformers. What a week for me playing platformers. Just if I'm not playing XCOM or Isaac, platformers non-stop. I don't know. Maybe it's the genre du jour. In any case, we're going to continue here. I played about maybe an hour total of Sugar Cube Bittersweet Factory, and that's taken me to the second world, but to be fair, uh, when I played this last night and then booted it up this morning for the video, I, like, my save file had been deleted for whatever reason, so I had to completely rebeat the first section here. And let's start in the first section, so we can actually get some idea for how this game actually works. I'm going to skip over the cutscene here, because sometimes it makes fraps act super weird. Um, but basically, we'll get an indication for how this game works pretty quickly here. So, as this cupcake says, I love this guy's happy overalls. If I can get some overalls like that with a face on them, well, I won't wear them. But, you know, maybe if I had a child, I would dress them up in that. Especially if they had a particularly square head. Anyway, uh, only tiles you've passed through can be flipped. Check the boxes around you as you go on. So basically, the gimmick for this platformer, as of course every platform in 2012, has to have some sort of gimmick working for it. I mean, I say that negatively, but then when Gianna Sisters didn't have a gimmick, I was like, I don't get it, no stars! Uh, so basically, uh, there are elements of the background that you can kind of see fading, or faded out there. And as we jump, or move through them, it causes us to flip them to the foreground, where then we can interact with them as we see fit. For example, we can just land on this platform. There is also the ability to make it so things don't flip, but we obviously want to make it so things do flip. By the way, I apologize for the fact that this game has the single most annoying jump sound of all time. Get used to this, you're going to be hearing a whole heck of a lot of it, unfortunately for everybody involved. Um, yeah, that, that does not stop for the entirety of the game. There's never going to be a situation where you find a, a better sounding jump mechanic than that in this game. Just get used to it, sadly. Similarly, get used to this like weird elevator music. Whenever you need to stop, you can press R to restart the level. One major complaint I have about this game. It recognizes the 360 controller natively. I guess it's a minor complaint, but it recognizes the controller natively. However, uh, all the prompts are given in the PC's natural controls. I mean, this happens on the flip side, and it's worse when it happens that way. When you're playing a PC game and it automatically gives you Xbox controls, even though you're using a keyboard and or mouse. However, uh, this is annoying as well. Why can't you just, if you know that there's a 360 controller, just change the buttons, man. I don't think this was built in XNA, and thus um, might not have access to... The standard, like, Microsoft buttons for assets, but, uh, that shouldn't really matter in the whole scheme of things. So, this is the last, basically, tutorialization we get here, and basically the, the game just told us, Hey, watch out for enemies. You can't jump on their head. You're not Mario. <laughs> we know video games. That was terrible right there. Um, so yeah, we can't jump on enemies' heads. Instead, what we will do is just avoid them, which, you know, it works. I don't particularly like it. I like being able to kill my enemies and see the fear in their eyes, however. You know, you can't always get what you want. So what I'm trying to do here is just flip over one of these squares. There we go. And then I will use those as platforms to get to the exit here. So, how do I feel? Oh, this is the worst level for this sweet sound. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Digging the egg nipple, though, on the right side, for sure. I could get a little taste of that. Breakfast in bed, am I right, guys? Oh, I'm dead. Um, you might be able to tell by the tone of my voice rather than my words, but I don't think Sugar Cube Bittersweet Factory is a very good game. There's lots of complaints I have about it. Let's start with the obvious ones. In terms of, like, music and sound design, I think it's absolutely awful. Maybe that's unfair to say, but, like, seriously, the music is completely boring and uncompelling, but the sound design, man, the only sound you hear for the entire game is this and this. And they are both super annoying. Uh, that being said, bad sound design and music is not enough to necessarily hold a good game back. But it makes a mediocre game that much worse. It, it 
puts it under the edge. You know how you normally say, you know, if a game is decent but it has great music or something, that puts it over the edge? This pulls what is previously a mediocre game under the edge. Other major complaints. Shit's just way too easy, but it has weird random spikes in difficulty that uh, I don't really understand the purpose of. Like, most of the time that I spend with this game is super, super easy. I can't stress that enough. Like, even stuff like this where there's ostensibly some sort of puzzle that you have to figure out is incredibly easy to solve. Um, whereas, occasionally you'll come across levels that are exceptionally difficult. We'll see some of those when we go to the Chocolate Factory, which is the next level. Uh, but for now... I'm just gonna try to get to this. Oh, there used to be a gem. Oh, that's bad. Uh, up in the top right, but I guess you can't collect that on future run-throughs. But anyway, they're called Sugar Jewels. That's how you unlock the true ending. So there is some sort of story going on in this game, uh, which I haven't really been following. But we're playing as some kind of sugar cube man. The introduction to the Chocolate Factory stage tells us that he is he. Whenever he cries, that gives sugar to the world. It's super weird. Uh. Although not altogether terrible, I guess. It, it definitely fits with the aesthetic of the game. In its absurdity. By the way, the other thing is graphically... That was terrible. Uh, I think this game looks pretty bad. That might not be fair. But, like, I, the, the character design itself, you know, it's cute. It's an interesting design, I suppose. But the, the backgrounds look super cheap. And actually, the game in general just looks super cheap. But mostly my, my major complaint... It's kind of twofold, and then, and then both of those folds have to deal with the gameplay. I feel like the gameplay is A, not clear. I mean, to a certain extent, I understand uh, what's going on, but in the moment, it's kind of hard to tell what you should be doing in some situations. The other complaint is just that the game is way too fucking easy. Like, this is ostensibly not a platformer, it's a puzzler, more so. Uh, but that being said, you guys know that I'm god-awful at puzzle games and not that much better at platformers and um, I have never really gotten stuck on a level for more than like 30 seconds in this game it is seriously seriously easy the puzzling is not difficult the platforming is not difficult and that might just be because I'm at you know like the first worlds of the game but recall a game I often like to reference Super Meat Boy the first levels of Super Meat Boy first time you played through some of those were a little bit difficult now they might seem silly but the first time, things were different. So th this is our boss. This marks the end of the first level here. And then, basically the way you deal with these bosses is you have to wait for them to jump. And then when they jump, you run under them. I botched it there. But the way you beat these bosses most of the time is just by booking it. If you run as fast as you can and get to the boss as fast as you can, usually that is your opening, at least from the two bosses I've fought so far, to, to get under them easily. So there's a little bit more trial and error here, but not a whole lot. As you can see, that was pretty goddamn easy. So having finished that, we'll go to the Chocolate Factory next and check out some of those levels. Again, I am going to skip the cutscene because it causes Fraps to freak out. This game forces your display into 800 by 600, which is annoying as hell because, you know, it's not 1996. But anyway, we'll get started here. Stage 1. I'm going to skip over the Chocolate Factory there. And we will learn a little bit more here. So there are some new mechanics they teach you. Like, basically, sometimes you'll walk over uh, a tile and it'll switch from chocolate to ice. Ice isn't just slippery, it also makes you move faster as well. Which makes it possible to clear things like that spike jump. So they do introduce... Maybe it wasn't fair to say that the game isn't really varied. This reminds me a great deal of the kid levels from Super Meat Boy. Um, not to mention those portals, which should look familiar. Uh, but in any case... What the heck was I? Oh, that was bad. Um, shallow is maybe a better way to put the game. There's not... There's a little bit of variety, but mostly it's just shallow. You're just manipulating... Like, you're either jumping over and over to try to get this trial and error working. There we go. Uh, and just, like, figure out where the heck you're supposed to go, because you spend a lot of your time just wondering, you know, what the heck you're supposed to do. Uh, or you're manipulating, basically, your left bumper. Oh, that was bad. Uh, manipulating your left bumper to uh, prevent tiles from flipping and thus generating a, a possible way for you to beat the level. I hope that I articulated that well. Really? I mean, Sugar Cube... This is not going well. Sugar Cube Bittersweet Factory is not an awful game. I hesitate to say that because I, I kind of feel like it's awful. But I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and instead just suggest that it's coming out in like the worst possible time to come out if you're a platformer. Like already this week I've already played PID. I've already played Gianna Sisters. I've already played... Um, I thought there was one more platformer I played this week but I totally forgot about it. And beyond that... 
I'm just generally a pretty strict judge when it comes to platforming games, I feel. It's been a pretty good year, you know, you got games like Snapshot that have come out, Vessel, which I didn't like all that much in the moment, but the more I, I think about it, the more I think the Vessel was, was pretty solid this year. Um, oh, this is awful. Uh, but it's just not good enough to compete, basically, and it, it's in the same, like, $10 price range as all those other games on Steam, when it's a game that looks like, you know, not just graphically and aesthetically and all that, but, uh, looks like it should be, you know, maybe $3 or $5 at most. The problem here is that I continually, uh, hold the left bumper, which I should not be doing. Instead, I should just do this. It's because I was talking at the same time. This is this jump is super easy. Then we'll just let go of left bumper so we cause the platforms to switch. Come over here. Get this nonsense all done. Now that we've got ice, we're gonna move all the way over here and do the same thing. This. Oh, come on! I was so close! And of course, inevitably, this is what happens when I look at a platform game. This game isn't hard at all. Proceeds to fail miserably. Okay, let's try this again. They're not quite... Okay. I swear to God, this is super easy. I'm not sure if you can do it this way. I don't think you can, that's not even close. Uh, but the way I did it the first time was just to do this. Fall here, switch these all to ice, because that makes you run faster. Oh, and slip, so that was a disaster right there. Seriously, it's comical. Same thing in the Gianna Sisters video. I think this game is pretty easy, proceeds to fail 20 times at the same area. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Just do it! LeBron James, Tiger Woods, Nike style, adultery, professional sports. I don't know anything about professional sports. Okay, we're gonna try to get another running start at this. Here we go. There we go, fucking finally. Okay, now they introduced sort of a new mechanic here, where basically you have to be rained on. This is also kind of frustrating, because it takes forever every single time you get hit. And by getting rained on, uh, you get smaller, and by getting smaller... As we take another drop here, if possible. No. Nope. Um, by getting smaller, you now find it possible to enter into smaller passageways. I'm not sure I, I was small enough there, indeed. Okay. What about this time? Now, we should get this Sugar Jewel. Because... Sugar Jewel, by the way, <clears throat> if you're ever, you know, in the Honey Boo Boo family, there's a free name for you that you can use. Um, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. So just want to run over here, land on top of this thing, in case you missed the opening cutscene... Oh, I'm too small to get in there, okay. That's something I've never said before. Um, so we'll get we'll get a little smaller here, then we'll get in there. So this is the extent of the puzzling. Let's put it this way, trying this is not. Uh, this is very, very shallow and, and simple. Uh, but yes, indeed, in case... Uh, I see my problem now. In case you missed the, the um, cupcake telling us, those sugar jewels are the only way to unlock the true ending. I have no idea what the true ending is. The one point I will give this game uh, positively, like unequivocally positively, I've, I've talked a lot about some middling aspects of the game, uh, but one unequivocally positive aspect of the game is that it's fucking crazy. I guess we got a cutscene there, or we got a, an achievement there. Uh, like the the absurdity in the in the cutscenes is fantastic, and I apologize. Northern Lion drinking game. Every time I say cutscene, take a shot. Oh, that was stupid right there. Um, Let's just kill ourselves and restart this level. This is should be easier than I'm making it look right now. Uh, but yes, we're playing as this like anthropomorphic sugar cube. Its tears provide the sugar for the world, but it doesn't want to be sad anymore. So obviously that means it has to go through this, you know, gauntlet of spikes and assholes. I'm not going to knock the game for its story unnecessarily. I mean, all platform games, to some extent, uh, have bizarre ass stories. So we're just going to finish this level here. And there's one level that we're going to be coming up to soon, which is the closest thing that I've seen in this game to a difficult level. What about this time? Oh! I was trying not to die there. Um, we'll see it in a second. First things first. Worried about your height? It's okay. Why do you think you're a sugar cube? This game's blatant use of, of meaningless quotation marks worries me sometimes. So I guess your height also represents your health, similar to Mario. This is the level that took me about five minutes the first time I played it. So, here's the thing. Let's just go through this level like you might go through it normally for the first time. You can see we're uncovering spikes and stuff like that. And this is another aspect of the game that I feel warrants complaining about. Worth noting, let me give the A button, the jump button here, a light tap. Alright, now let me hold it down as long as I can. 
Every jump is exactly the same height, which makes this a serious problem. Because, uh, again, let's just do a standard, like, fast run through here so you can see. With every jump being the same height, we're guaranteed to hit those spikes. So what we have to do is actually, like, terraform this level so that there's no spikes on the ceiling. And if there's spikes on the ceiling, uh, then, you know, basically we, we can't get through. So the way we're going to do this is just by manipulating the left bumper here. And this is the most puzzly that the game has gotten. And also the most incredibly frustrating that the game has gotten. Uh, so basically what I ended up doing to beat this one is just creating like platforms like this and just memorizing where each safe zone was. Which I failed miserably at there. But forgive me, that was last night. This is tonight. Well, today anyway. So what we're trying to do quickly is just... There we go. Just create the platform. We can flip this safely. Oh, no. Now we have serious problems. Okay, we still need to... Again, sometimes I get... Don't get me wrong here, I get the, the mechanic. However, and again, just walking into the spikes kills you, which is infuriating for me now, coming from a Spelunky standpoint. Um, I, I get the gimmick of the game, don't get me wrong. I understand it 100%. However, in practice, it can actually be kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. Okay, so this is a nice little platform we've got set up for ourselves here. We should probably get this one done, too. And then just come over here. Um, this is a safe spot. This should be a safe spot. And then we can just make our way down here. Yeah, in, in practice, it's difficult to tell what areas are safe and what are not. I don't know if I can make this jump. Oh, fuck, I jumped into the spikes. And this, again, this plays into what I was talking about earlier, where I feel like this game has wild shifts in its difficulty. Last level took me, what, 25 seconds? This one's gonna take me 100 years, even though I know the solution. So we, you know, we know that this one is safe, so we'll just do that. Oh my gentle Jesus. I hate it so bad! This is probably gonna make up most most of the recording here, is me trying to beat this level. And we'll probably play through to the end of the second world, and then we'll stop. Because there's, you know, not much need to continue on after that, I would say. Second I botched, there we go. So we know that these are unsafe. This one should be safe. Okay, this one should not be safe, this one is safe. Okay, so we've got a nice little setup here, we should be able to make this. There's no spikes on the ceiling. Just don't fuck it up. Okay, good. And, uh, we are actually introduced to something else here. These, these like, cupcakes that will come across. That was terrible. Um, and what these do is shift our aura. So, ostensibly, it's our aura that is actually flipping these blocks. But if we pick this up, as you can see, our aura now shifts to the right. So we are now affecting the blocks in front of us. Uh, did we kill that dude? We did. And this creates a lot of trial and error for someone as mentally handicapped as me, apparently. As I try to figure out how we can fit through these areas. Come on! Where's the sugar rain when I need it? Sugar rain. Favorite mid-90s alternative rock band, Sugar Rain. Seriously, I need you to not be an asshole. Let's restart this level. I think I botched it for myself. The Northern Lion story. That's my new catchphrase. I think I botched it for myself. Uh, we got some more... Cupcake Enus here. So I think what I've just got to do is actually use my left bumper appropriately. There we go. We could kill this guy, but there's no need to kill this guy. When instead... Oh, he's going to kill us, though. Unless I can make the greatest jump of all time there. So I guess what we might want to do is try to trap this guy in the cupcakes. Again, the first... Oh, that was terrible. The first time I played through this, so easy. I don't know what's happened since then. We don't... We only need a little bit more ice here, probably. Once you get me in front of the cameras, what can I say? The camera adds 10 pounds and takes away 20 IQ points. So we're gonna go like this. Oh, I think I'm, I think I'm okay. Just give it a second. Now we trap him. We do this. And then we trap him. We do this. And then we're gonna trap him. Get ready. That didn't work. Then we trap him. There we go, finally! Okay, so now we just make our way through here. Do exactly the same thing to this guy. Let's trap him. Easy. Oh, but now we got this nonsense again. 
So I think we just want to do like this. Okay, we're good. And then we are going to come through the cupcakes at the end here. Things I never thought I would say playing this video game. And now I've got it all wrong. We're so close. Just do it. There we go. Okay, this level, these levels, again, so those two levels were kind of difficult, actually. Prepare for some ease. That was a bad example of, of the ease that I was going to prepare you for, but get ready for this. Like, now it just becomes super easy. We get this aura that actually takes our aura downwards. Uh, so in using this, we can just, like, walk over here, and the spikes will disappear. Unless you walk into them, in which case they will not disappear. They will flay you limb from limb and make sure that you are dead. Let's pick this up. Here we go. Like, oh my god, okay. I swear to you. Do as I say, not as I do. This game is easy. So we're gonna fall down on it. Oh, don't walk into the spikes, you dangus. This should be the easiest thing in the world. So we pick up the, the candy cane. I don't actually don't know what form of candy that is. And then you just jump, and you just have leaps of faith, basically. Believe that the platforms will be there, provided you jump on them. And they will be there. Like so, okay. And again, this level is actually surprisingly difficult, which means, in true Northern Lion fashion, I'll probably beat it on a first attempt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, otherwise, things would make far too much sense. So we're just gonna activate the switch here. I guess that's what those yellow and red things are. They're not really articulated as being anything very well, uh, but I believe there's switches so when you flip the platforms around them, they activate and, you know, then do something else. Either that or we're just flipping the fans and thus turning them on. I guess? I don't know, man. So we're just gonna make our way over here now. No, don't do this to me, ducky! Okay, we'll sneak through here. No, we won't. We'll actually get killed. What we're doing here is basically just hitting both switches and then waiting for these diggles to get out of the way so that we can get to the end. That was just off the cuff, but man, they really do resemble diggles, don't they? They don't have like the narwhal horn, like the curved horn, but apart from that, very diggle-ish. That was terrible, I probably should have waited like two more seconds. But we're almost at the end of the chocolate factory, and again, it might seem... Northern Lion says this game's easy, but it's actually quite difficult. Uh, that's not indeed the case. Even if it was difficult, that represents us being 40% of the way through the game in one video. Which is not really, oh my god, all that long. All things considered, I believe there's only five worlds. Beyond that, you might be saying, yeah, but you've solved these puzzles before. You already know how it's done. To a certain extent, yes, but the puzzles are super easy. The real issue is just actually getting the, the platforming down. That was, I don't know why I would do that. This fucking midget Psyducks getting in my face. We're gonna fall down, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna totally botch that jump. Sometimes it, it, the mechanics are frustrating in that way, that like you're two blocks high, and there's a two block jump, and you just hit your head on it by accident. Same thing happens in Mario though, I'm not gonna hold it against the game. That was more just a stray observation that, uh, you know, is something that can occasionally be frustrating about this game, but it's not frustrating as a result of poor game design, it's just frustrating as a result of me being impatient. Because if I wait two seconds longer, it becomes a three block jump, and then there's no issues. So we're gonna wait for this guy to jump over again, and then again, and now we're gonna go. Oh, we can't go though. Did I, do I have the timing completely wrong on these or something? Because when there's only a one block square, you can't get into it. There should be like a duck or something, but there's not. So you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna wait here for like a second. And we'll activate that switch again later. So just give it a second here. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna wait for the next switch to come. We're safe. And now I think we have a reasonable path to victory here. I think? No? What am I missing here? Maybe last night I just got incredibly lucky. Or maybe I've been drinking heavily this morning. Seriously, I don't understand why this is such a, a problem. So we'll jump over the diggle, and I'm just watching this right here, because we need... Two squares to get in. Now would be the time, right? Why is there still not two squares? There's only one square available for me to move. There we go. Go run! There's no time to waste here. Okay, we're through. I don't know why that took so long. Uh, I think for this one, all we have to do is basically platform. I know that sounds obvious, but I think we just go like, uh-huh. And then, uh-huh. Yes. 
And then, uh huh. Okay, so we basically just create the platforms for ourselves. Come up here, and then there should be an easy way in. Ooh, I don't know if I like that. I like this side, but I don't like the other side. At least there's no spikes to deal with on this level. So again, very inconsistent difficulty. That level was super easy in comparison. To the, the level that we just went through, obviously. And we're gonna try the same thing here. Can we actually just jump to the exit from there? We can indeed. Now that was that was terrible on my part. I remember this level. What I do not remember is how to stop it from being a dick. I think we just rush it. A lot of the solutions in these levels just come down to basically running as fast as you can and you'll, you'll solve the problem. I just beat three levels in like the time it took me to beat half of that level a little while ago. This level's a little tricky, I'll admit. But again, you want to? want me to emphasize my point about rushing? Watch this. I think if we just... Oh, I think I started a little bit late. Maybe my point about rushing is completely meaningless. Yes, we just died. But I think if I just restart quickly and then just run, I'll be fine. Maybe I shouldn't have jumped there. All we need to do is make it one more place, though. Oh, come on! Don't make me look like a fool here. It's gonna make me look like a fool here. Again, I did... I feel like the title of this episode should be like, Last Night, but I don't want to get sued by the Strokes. Here we go. I got an idea now. We're gonna go as fast as we can. We're gonna jump over that one. Perfect. Okay, that was ten times easier. Now is we're fighting this boss again. Again, prepare for basically the same mechanic. That was terrible. But if we just run as fast as we can... Oh, we need to get the ice underneath them as well. So here we go. Hit. 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 We'll wait a second. Then go. That was very close. Timing's just a little bit different on each one of these guys. And go! I'm telling you. I'm not crazy. And go! There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we could go to the third level here, the candy factory. I'm not going to. This video's already gone on too long, I think. This is Sugar Cube Bittersweet Factory, available on Steam for, I believe it's $10. Could be 8 I don't like it! I think if you were gonna buy uh, a platformer, you know, this week, this month, depending on when you're watching it, there's there's various other platformers that are new that have come out uh, that are just as good, if not better. In fact, there's no if not there. They're just as good and better. But in any case, it's not awful, but, uh, you know, I, I could maybe see myself having some fun with this on the iOS or Android, but uh, w with it being on a desktop platform as opposed to a mobile platform, uh, it's pretty bare bones, especially... No graphics and sound options really is incredibly frustrating. I hate running this in 800 by 600. It makes for shitty videos, but hey! We deal with the... The cards were dealt. We play the cards were dealt. That's what I'm going for there. But uh, in any case, again, thank you guys for watching. I would recommend you probably do not buy Sugar Cube Bittersweet Factory. But as always, it's up to you. And I will see you next time.